Well, hello Periscope, it's Alistair at Lazarus Training here. Uh, hello, a bit better. Hi, yeah. Uh, we had a question from someone on one of our first aid and remote locations courses the other week about, well, what would we have in a small first aid kit? And uh, Dizzy, the guy that asked us, said, well, hey, look, I can only have five things because I, I can't afford a big first aid kit. Um, I don't have space for it because I'm out on a motorbike, mountain bike, etc. And he asked our opinion. So we thought, yeah, that's a really good question. So how do we answer it? Well, this is how we answer it now. What we have in front of us is some kit. Now we added this ourselves. We weren't specifically asked, but this is a small first aid kit bag, um, size, shape, you can judge off of my hand, um, of the type often called by the military individual first aid kits. And so our challenge was to fit five things into this small first aid kit. And item number one, I think it had to be a tourniquet. Now we've got a few different ones here. We've got the Combat Application Tourniquet, or CAT as it's known, and this is one unpacked, so you can see essentially what it's like. We've got the RATS Tourniquet here, Rapid uh, Access Tourniquet, if I remember right, or a Rapid Application Tourniquet with a buckle thing. But this one here is probably one of our favourites, it's the Stretch, Wrap and Tuck Tourniquet. Um, essentially it's just rubber, really, um, but easy to apply, uh, labelled and stuff. And it's got a couple of extra uses that we could use, and particularly as the audience we were talking to was a, a first aid and remote locations um, audience, we thought, well, uh, the other uses of this mean probably would be included in the kit. Um, pluses and minuses, the cat is easier to apply to yourself, so I think that's obviously good if you feel you're in that setting, but say, on balance, stretch, wrap, untuck, tourniquet was our favorite, and I'll try and remember to come back and tell you the kind of extra uses for it. So sticking with the catastrophic bleed idea, if we could, we would get into it, hello there, Bizic, um, we'd get into it a hemostatic or clotting agent. Now I've put two different types here, not so much because we want to have two in there, but just to show there are different ones. These uh, are used to stop severe bleeding where you can't use a tourniquet. So a tourniquet could go onto an arm or to a leg. These might be used somewhere else, perhaps like the neck, the armpit, Different types, I don't know where that shows up. This one is a, a powder um, that you would pour into the wound and then press on top of it. This one, I don't know if you can see that, it's a bandage inside there, essentially with this powder on the bandage. Now, the, this one needs to be used with packing, and so we snuck some packing, some dressing type stuff, vacuum packed, big lot, lump of it, but it's just gauze essentially, which you could, if you need be, poke into the wounds. So, We've had our tourniquet and we have now got, if we can, a clotting agent into our kit. Next thing along my line is a big bandage of some sort. Now, I've put a few here to show you different ones. This is the first stop or emergency care dressing and this is one that's opened. So you can see the weird bit of this, this clip thing. Now, they're colloquially called the Israeli dressing, so any of you that have seen those before might know that name. But this is one of our favourites now. Now your guess is as good as mine of how we pronounce that. We've gone for Olay's being the name, but it's a, a new style dressing. It's got features, uh, instead of a clip, it's got a little bubble thing. Perhaps we'll do a, a separate broadcast or video. So it's a bandage, um, big bandage, bigger than this, couple of unique features on it. Um, and so what we'll do is, if, if we're interested, I'll do another broadcast perhaps uh, tomorrow and show you what this is, how you can use it. How's that sound? Uh, no reply, not to worry, but a bandage has to go into our first aid kit. So we're up to three items here. Now, you've got some choices. I, personally, would always put a decent pair of scissors into the first aid kit. Uh, if you can't see it, you can't treat it, so we need to kind of cut through the clothing to get to the wound. And we could also use this for cutting clothing to improvise uh, more bandages, uh, splints and so on. So scissors uh, have gone into our kit. So. We're at a critical point now. I'd say we've got four of our five items. So what do we add? What extras? Well, we have got other medical bits of kit we could have, but actually one of the critical things we suggest you add is a pen. Now, this is the sort of medic mode kicking in. If you don't write it down, it didn't happen. And we need to make notes on the casualty, physically on their skin, of all the stuff we've done. It's the only reason we have a back of our hand, as far as I'm concerned, is that you can write down any observations you've done on the casualty, like their heart rate, their breathing rate, and the times, etc. And you don't have a pen, you can't write it down. So 
one, two, three, four, five, technically. So there you go, Dizzy, there's your answer. What five bits of kit we would have. We'd have a tourniquet of some description. Options are available. Perhaps a big meaty dressing, possibly a hemostatic agent, decent pair of scissors, and a pen to write things down. Almost in there, other possibilities. Roller tape, uh, we've just got some, uh, this Gorilla tape, um, which is like in, um, gaffer tape, uh, a lot of the media people we work with call it. Uh, we can use that for sealing down bits of plastic to seal a chest wound, use it for tying things together, and again for improvising, so that was near run thing. And then I guess if we could sneak other items in, we'd be looking at something like this, uh, a chest seal. Russell chest seal, good one is that it's flat, it can be folded up. But our favourite at the moment is these ones, the Nightingale chest seal, folded, still works. And again, if there's interest, we can do a, a video showing these being opened up. Um, I had some gloves here, because obviously we'd like you to wear gloves whenever treating a casualty. Airways are commonly put into kit, so if we're able to stretch five to seven, some of this stuff would come in. But to answer the question, tourniquet, big dressing, scissors, pen, maybe a crossing agent as well. Well, I hope that's been of help. I hope that's answered your question, Dizzy, um, about what five bits of kit would we put into a small first aid kit if we were buying it ourselves, if we were carrying it perhaps on our bike, on our mountain biking or motorbiking, it didn't have loads of space. Um, so there seems to be some interest on the OLEF dressings, um, the comments coming up at the side of the screen. So perhaps tomorrow, one o'clock, we'll broadcast and we'll show you what this dressing is, how we can use it. So until then, thanks for tuning in. Let's see if I can do this without cutting you off. So I'll see you uh, tomorrow.